All right, everybody. It's us. The chicken is in the oven. <laughs> Mike, Bonnie, and Tim are gathered around a table. We are, I have, I'm holding, if, if you're on YouTube, you can see I'm holding, like I feel very official holding this microphone like this. <laughs> you look pretty official. Like, like I'm, I, it's way better than sitting in my boxer shorts in my office. I don't do that. Bonnie, well. did you see Bonnie's look of disgust when, when that, <laughs> that image was thrown out there? Um, but thank you, Bonnie. I appreciate the uh, affirmation. All right. So we are, um, <laughs> we're doing some mini episodes again because of your incredible questions. Um, we are recording on YouTube, at least this round of mini episodes. So if you want to check us out and Bonnie, Bonnie, I got to say, I really wanted bigger hair. I'm not going to lie. I was hoping, I was <laughs> hoping it would be full Bonnie. Is this is full Bonnie? No, it's not. You can tell. You can tell. I can't tell. I've seen full Bonnie. <laughs> and That's because someone, you know, helped me with it. All right. And, um, <laughs> And so we've got we've got Tim, and you know, thankfully, full yep, full Tim. So anyway, um, uh, Q and A. Thank you, as always. We want to invite you to share these, uh, to like, rate, and subscribe, um, to help us um, and support us uh, through uh, you go to voxpodcast.com. So we are listener supported. Anyway, all that is to say, uh, we've got another one of your great questions, Bonnie. Tee it up. All right. So here's my question. What is an accurate view of biblical womanhood? Tim Stafford <laughs> will be answering this question. Oh, I thought I was the accurate description. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, I hate to even use that phrase, but it's the best I can come up with at the moment. What is the theological foundation of how I'm meant to be living my life as a Christian woman? Mm. I want so badly to live my life in a way that is honoring to God and his calling and purpose for my life, but I so badly want to ditch all the twisted, misogynistic baggage from the church culture I was raised in. Oh, wow. How do I go about doing that? Well, uh, Bonnie, this seems <laughs> this sort seems of be, this seems uh, sort of in your but, ballpark. I mean, I don't want to stereotype mm. here, but it seems like maybe you've it asked some of those questions. I might be the depiction of a godly woman, but you should take this. I should yes. take this question. Yeah. What do you think, Bonnie? Um, yeah, I, I agree with what she said here. Growing up, it was very much an understanding that if you were going to be a biblical woman, you were a Proverbs 31 woman, which I'll get to in a minute, and quiet, um, submissive, soft-spoken, mm. not a lot of opinions, blend mm. in. So I've obviously... You're O for whatever number that was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and I think when, when I say, like for me, I actually don't even love feeling like um, the difference between a biblical woman and a biblical man. I think it's a Jesus follower. Mm. Done, hands down. So mm. that's where I would start, is like, look at Jesus, look at his disciples, what did they do? Um, what is Jesus about? Who does he love? Who's in the margins and who does he pull in? Like man or woman, I think that's where we should go. Mm. Um, the verse, there's two things that are always like kind of thrown at us as we're growing up. Um, one of them is the Mary and Martha passage, which we've de like dealt with many times here on the podcast. But um, this idea that one, one woman's like busying herself and she's too busy while the other one sits at Jesus's feet and she did the right thing uh, because she's like, gives up her place in the home to like pray and listen. Um, but what's actually happening there, as we've discussed before, but I think, did we do an episode on that? Mm -hmm. I think we must have, so you can go and listen to it, is that she's posturing herself as a student at the feet of Jesus. And so it's actually a very subversive move on both of their parts. So in that- She's assuming a male space. Yeah, exactly. She's assuming a male space and a male position mm -hmm. of a rabbi, because if she's training, if she's training under him, she's training to be a rabbi. So she's taking that over. So in terms of women have to be super submissive or they totally. can't do what they're supposed to do, that flies in the face of that. The second thing for Proverbs 31, um, I wouldn't even translate as woman, as oh. a legit woman, Oh, actually. What? I, um, the whole book is about wisdom. What? What? And um, <laughs> it's actually written like Proverbs 31 for sure, is written to males who are coming up in their adult manhood. And so the writer uses um, lady wisdom as a metaphor because honestly, like what's gonna get a young man's attention? 
a lady. So um, <laughs> that's wow. what he's doing. But so if you go back and instead you say like um, a woman who, who can find a woman great with like who can find and you substitute wisdom there, then it's a very different passage. It actually becomes about like what it means to be wise, not just what it means to be a woman. And the whole thing is about being wise in the small things and the mundane things and being wise in the way we live our lives. So for me, I would start there too of going mm-hmm. – how much of this stuff that I've been told is directly only for women is actually for everybody. And um, what can I do in the Bible that points me towards wisdom? And from there, who am I in Christ and how can I live that out? Mm -hmm. I would would absolutely agree with that. Uh, It was revolutionary (laughs) to um, hear from a, a friend of mine who's an Old Testament scholar that, no, no, that's all about wisdom. Yeah, Um, It has been used to trap so many um type a women um into you should be a non-type a person or shame somebody Ah, oh absolutely so so the idea of biblical biblical manhood and womanhood is about to me and i and i know this is totally flippant um and it's worthy of more discussion but it's but it's a crock (laughs) i mean it just it is like like every from john eldridge to Joyce Meyer, to whoever teaches on gender stuff, you end up reading our cultural constructs and mapping them over. Over the scripture. Yes, mm-hmm. and and I understand, like, of course there are principles about what it is to be a woman and what it is to be a man, no question about it. But there's not a one-to-one correspondence because what, what femaleness meant in the first century is so different from what femaleness is today and what maleness meant. I mean, you just can't map it like, well, the the man's always the initiator because God right. initiated uh, the church. Well, okay. I mean, but but see, the, the Bible isn't framing the conversation that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so I, the idea that there is a biblical version of manhood and a biblical version of womanhood, I will agree that there are some expressions of manhood and womanhood that aren't consistent. Right. Right. With the overarching narrative of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. But the idea that there's one that's biblical is just so anachronistic. I can hardly stand it. Yeah. Um, And so I think I think not only do we realize that very often what's addressed in the wisdom literature is wisdom. um, But but then you have the passages like the Mary and Martha. But you even have Peter speaking of weaker vessels and calling Abraham Lord, like Sarah called Abraham Lord, so we should call our husbands Lord. I mean, you you just try to map that stuff onto yeah. 21st century culture without any of the hard work of what... The, what was happening there. Yes, yeah. like the ho- these household codes. And even in Ephesians, where it looks so clear, wives submit to your husbands, isn't that clear? Right. It's, <laughs> right. And it's so much more subversive than we even give yeah. it credit for. So I, I have a general, and this the big critique of the position that Bonnie and I are articulating is that we, we're not taking the Bible at its word, right? Well, here's what it says. So it just, just read it. Here are the English words, read it, and it clearly says, this is what women should do. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and our, I don't know what your response would be. My response, of course, is, well, that's fantastic. You're listening to one side of a conversation, and you think, I mean, try that with your kids. Try that with text messages or emails from even 10 years ago. Or suppose 2,000 years from now, somebody finds my email inbox. Right. And, and I'm like, dude, we killed it today. Okay. Well, the English words just say we killed something, but yeah. you know, we meant something else, right? They don't, I mean, there's just this, there, 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 there's an arrogance that simply says it is a one, there's a one-to-one correspondence between the words that are translated into English and to my experience and understanding yeah. of those words. And that's just not true. Mm-hmm. Now that doesn't mean the Bible's completely off limits to us. No, there's so much you can understand in exactly that way. Right. But when it comes to some of this stuff, there's there's much more homework to do. Yeah, I agree. Because like, I think what we read is Paul sometimes being limiting or a jerk. He's actually he was, so incredibly subversive for his oh time. Goodness, but yes. we don't know that That's because right. we just read everything into it. So I think we do the Bible a huge disservice when we make it something it's not. And we yeah. say it 
said this and it transfers directly when we take it out of its yeah. form and its nuances. That's right. So we have to be able to do that and put that in there. Well, and you think of like some of the, the big passages about women be silent in church. Mm -hmm. And um, what you begin to realize is that there's a whole backstory to why that's being written um, and what that even means. And that like every word of that sentence in Timothy is contested. Uh, every yeah. single word of the sentence, there's disagreement about what the words mean. Yeah. And you're literally going to, you're going to base on excluding half the church, right? Right. From participating in leadership because there's, there's one sentence that is hugely debatable. I mean, and, and you're just like, okay, well, I understand. And there are people who are God honoring who do that. There are people who are God honoring that disagree with those who do that. Understand, I'm not trying to get into that point, but just to say the, the, the idea that there's some biblical definition of manhood or womanhood hanging out there as some platonic ideal for us to measure up to, that's just false. Yeah. Because anyone who preaches that stuff will end up promoting a version of manhood or womanhood that looks exactly like them. Yeah. That's, that's just so true. true. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, Tim, what do you got as our resident man? Oh, I went from the depiction <laughs> of a woman at the beginning of this episode. This is a roller coaster for you. This is. I'm <laughs> feeling exhausted. Um I think it's interesting. I mean, there's so many things in life to deal with. I hate that this is something that you and this person have had to deal with. I, th the idea of like deconstruction being a liberal or a whatever idea, um, like what's the harm in deconstructing something even if the result is you came back to the same, totally. yeah, you know what I mean? No like harm. just to know that what it is that you have is yeah. true. It's, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah, I love it. Great question. Who is this from? Uh, Whitney. Whitney. Great question, Whitney. Hope, yeah. hope, hope this helps. Yeah. Maybe, maybe just adds more to the confusion. But uh, Whitney, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah. And then any of you want to write in, you can tweet, Instagram, Facebook, or email us at hello at voxpodcast.com. Awesome. All right, friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. YouTube audience, we salute you. Oh.